Good evening, Scorpion families. Welcome to the 2021-2022 school year. I am Colleen Koblinski, Parent Involvement and Community Relations Specialist here at Desert Edge, and I'm going to take you tonight through the information you need to know to start the school year right and hopefully answer a lot of the questions that we've been seeing and addressing here over the last few weeks. So welcome again. We are the home of the Scorpions. Our school colors are copper, silver, and black, and our enrollment currently sits at just a little over 1,800 students. Our team of administrators is led by Mrs. Julie Jones, principal. We also this year have four assistant principals. They are Mr. Tony Gardner, Mrs. Cynthia Messia, Mr. Jason Lynn, and Mr. Dan Grumbling. Here on the slide, you will see the information with their part of the alphabet that they are responsible for when it comes to student discipline or academic issues, or if you have a concern or a question, this is the assistant principal that your child or children is assigned to, along with their email addresses if you have any questions. I would also like to make the note here that Mr. Lin is also our athletic director, so any questions related to athletics, he is one point of contact that you have, along with his administrative assistant, which we will share on the next slide. We have three amazing assistant, uh, administrative assistants here at the school. Mrs. Alicia Robinson is the principal's assistant. Mrs. Maggie Murillo is the assistant principal's assistant. And Mrs. Michelle Chianini is the athletic director's assistant. So if at any time you have questions as well, they are also a point of contact for you. And sometimes we suggest that you reach out to them prior to the assistant principal, depending on the severity or nature of your concern. We also have five amazing counselors, and they are also assigned to students by last name. Our team this year is returning from last year. We are very excited to have them all back. They include Mr. Robert Rainier, Charlotte Bethel, Kim Sears, Irma Padilla, and Ashley Hurley. Like I said before, their parts of the alphabet are also divided out for students, and these are the, the contacts that you will have for your child over the next four years, along with their email addresses. They also have two clerks that are in our front office here. If you've been here to do registration, you see their faces in the student services office, and they can answer a lot of questions for you as well. And their names are um, Ms. Deborah Falson and Ms. Martha Cruz. Their emails and phone numbers are provided. Let me just move my image here because I am blocking their phone numbers. So there you go. There's the phone numbers in case you have to reach out to them. Our next slide is our College and Career Center. So new this year is Mrs. Kim Nico. Some of you are familiar with Mr. Cravens. He did retire last year. So Mrs. Nico is new to our school this year and we are so excited to have her. She will be the College and Career Specialist. I have included her email address and phone number. Her main responsibilities and options for assistance include college and career options, college application assistance, FAFSA, campus tours and visits, scholarships, and military. So if at any time time you need over the course of the four years any questions and it's never too late to start. Um, she's a great person to reach out to and she can help you with anything pertaining to those areas. We also have our special education services department. And with that department, we have our exceptional student services director, which is Mrs. Elizabeth Jackson, and her clerk, Mrs. Tammy Clark. Um, those would be your points of contact if you have any questions regarding our special education um, exceptional services department. And then you have me. I am your parent resource center specialist. Um, I work with the community. I'm here for you. You as parents new and returning to the school, if you ever need anything, have a question, have a concern, can't get into parent view, don't know what to do about something, your student's not doing well in class and you've reached out to the teacher, you name the question or concern, I am here to help. And if I don't have the answer, I will find one for you. Um, my information is there on the screen, including my email address and phone number with extension. Um, I also do suggest that if you have social media, you follow one of our our accounts. We do have Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter as our primary sources, along with our videos this year, which will be provided on YouTube and also put on other social media um, platforms for those of you for your convenience. But we hope that you follow one of those. And like I said, parents, guardians, if you ever need anything, I'm here to help. I love what I do and I love helping you. I think that part of the relationship is helping your students to grow, but helping support you to help them to be successful. So please let me know what I can do along the way. 
Um, I would like to go into now our vision and motto of all students are college and career ready. And you'll see and hear a lot of the uh, phrase we are DE and the R stands for rigor, relevance and relationships. And that's the basis and the foundation of our school. It's what keeps us going and what we firmly believe in. Um, some of you may not be familiar with Title I, but Desert Edge is a Title I school. Um, the, the definition of that deals with um, schools with large concentrations of low-income students receiving supplemental funding to assist in meeting students' educational goals. For a student to be um, qualified as a Title I school, at least 40% of the students must enroll in the free and reduced lunch program. Currently, we have 46% of its student population participating in the free and reduced lunch program, which qualifies for student funding. Down the road in a few weeks, I will do another presentation about Title I and free and reduced. Um, we are all familiar with the fact that with the pandemic, there has been a lot of changes this year being that students will receive free breakfast and lunch, but Title I funding does so much more than just provide your child free breakfast and free lunch. There are so many options, including um, improving our curriculum, having additional instructional resources, counseling resources, your parent involvement center. My position and a couple other positions on this campus are here because of our Title I funding um, and staff programs and improvements are all things that we are able to provide for our school and for our community because of our Title I label. Um, and as a result, as I said, um, we have been able to bring in these resources and supports that some other schools in the area don't have the ability to provide. Um, moving forward, I would like to just talk about the recognitions of our school. Um, we have been a, an A-plus school of excellence for the last eight years. So we were for the years 2016 through 19, and again for 2020 through 2024. We were also one of the Washington Post Index Challenges, America's Most Challenging High Schools, the U.S. News and World Report we are listed in. Um, we are the gold medal winner for the Beat the Odds Institute. Um, Mrs. Jones was the Arizona NASSP Principal of the Year. We've had uh, 385 students take placement exams in AP. And last year, our class of 2021, despite the pandemic and despite all of the hardships, earned a combined total of $11.7 million in scholarships. And that's just a testament to our students, our staff, our community, and our support for one another to to drive our rigor, relevance, and relationships. Um, I would like to share some reminders with you that back to school information. So Monday, August 2nd is freshman only day. It will be a full day of school. It will be on campus with no other students, which is great. It allows them the opportunity to get a feel for the campus and learn some tips and tricks about how to go to classes and things of that nature with all then students returning on Tuesday, August 3rd. Also on Monday, August 2nd, we have Meet the Teacher Night open house that begins at 6 p.m. And it's going to be a great evening. You will be able to come to the campus. You can obtain your student schedule. We will only give them out to parents. So please, um, students, if you are watching this as well, your parent or guardian must be in attendance so that you can receive your schedule. If not, you will receive it the first day of classes. Um, also some information, our school office hours are 7.50 until 3.30 p.m. by or by appointment, and the school day is shifted a little bit this year. It's from 8.15 until 3.10 p.m. Um, we have many amazing academic programs here at Desert Edge, including our two signature programs, which is the Conservatory of Arts and Design and our Agriculture program. We also offer AP classes, honors classes. We have our Edge Academy and standards-based labs. We offer AVID, STEM programs, um, our math, English, PE, social sciences, fine arts, international languages, CTE program, and physical, or excuse me, special education programs are all amazing. And we have great staff here to help support our students in those programs. Next, I would like to talk about advisory. And the purpose of advisory is to ensure that every student feels a sense of belonging to a familiar peer group and has at least one adult on campus that knows them well and helps them to navigate through high school successfully and graduate ready for college, career, and life. So the, the purpose and the goal is that that same teacher that they meet their first day on the second or that they've had um, will be with them through the next four years. So as we grow, you have different teachers in math, you have different teachers in English, you have different teachers in social studies, but your advisory teacher is there with you throughout those four years. So you always can go back to them and those students also build a very tight bond and a relationship and do become a small family. 
Um, a couple other things to share with you. We have student class schedules. There's been a lot of questions about schedules. So freshman finalized schedules will be distributed on Monday, August 2nd at school when students attend. Upperclassmen schedules will be distributed early to parents only at Meet the Teacher Night open house, which begins again at 6 p.m. on the 2nd. And then all schedules will be distributed again on Tuesday, August 3rd when students arrive to school. And parent view and student view will be available beginning Tuesday, August 3rd. For those of you that don't have parent view yet, you can also send me an email and I can get you set up. But just know that um, those options right now, they might intermittently pop up here and there, but it will not be completely functioning until the 3rd. Um, power Hour. So Power Hour is a positive school-wide initiative to encourage and support student achievement. This plan allows for a one-hour lunch period, which is great for our students. They really love it. Students that require to attend academic overtime, also known as academic support, and you might also hear it called AOT, will, that will be held 30 minutes out of that hour if they are receiving DFs or incompletes in their classes and will lose that privilege of having an hour for lunch. So basically, essentially what that means is we have tutoring options and the op opportunity for students to receive extra assistance during the school day, and then it does not tie into their academic time, and they still have their half hour for lunch. We do have a discipline matrix for academic overtime. There are disciplinary actions for ditching this time. It is very valuable to our students and our teachers work very hard to provide supplemental lessons and support to our students. And this right here is our academic overtime matrix. Um, we call them strikes for each instance of um, not attending AOT. The first strike is a student and parent email warning. And then as you see, it gets a little bit more um, strict with each um, strike, with a student and parent email final notice. There is a contact made with the student and the parent and there is a detention. Um, there's a day of SIP, which is student improvement after school on Wednesdays. We also will have Saturday school. There will be admin uh, meetings, AOT contracts, and then it can get down to as far as out of school suspension and then that final meeting at the 10th strike to determine what's the best for the student at that point. A lot of questions have been asked about our bell schedule. And as you can see, we have our bell schedule here. Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday is a full day of school. The school day begins at 8.15 and runs until 3.10. You'll notice here that we have power hour one and power hour two. So depending on where students are placed for their, um, their classes and where the teachers are for their locations as well, that was going to determine whether or not if they have to serve AOT time if they go during power hour one or two and the opposite time is their lunch. We also want to make a note that this year we do not have late start. The district has gone to an early release schedule. So school will still start at 815, but the school day will then end at 140 p.m. So please take note of that, parents. If you had started scheduling appointments for your children, um, we would encourage you to try to get them in the afternoon so they don't miss academic time. We understand that this is a change, but just to reiterate that school will start every day at 8.15 with Wednesday being early release. Student parking. So students are required to purchase a $50 parking permit for the year. And when they do that, they will fill out an application, which includes driver's license, registration, insurance, and parent consent. Um, students will be assigned to a parking spot in the West parking lot, which is in the back of the school. Students who drive off campus without approval will lose their parking pass for the remainder of the year, not just the semester, the full school year, and there are no refunds. And starting Monday, August 16th, all vehicles must have a parking pass tag displayed. The information is available in our bookstore, or you can find the information online under the bookstore tab. Um, they have their application on there. You'll just download it, fill it out, bring all the necessary paperwork and your payment of cash check, or you can use a debit or credit card. Um, busing, we want to make sure that everyone is familiar with the bus routes. If you have questions about busing, I wish I could help you, but there's not a lot I can do beyond providing you the information for the district office. You have to sign up for your student if they are going to ride the bus with Edulog. And the next slide will have information about Edulog. Edulog is basically, I like to look at it as a similar app to an Uber or um a ride share app, but what it does is it basically shows you where the bus is, if the bus is running late, when the bus is expected to be at your home, and we need to know who is going to be riding the bus, so we ask every family to sign up for Edulog. 
If you do have questions, I have provided you information for who to reach out to. Also, we do have the tutor bus that is available Monday through Thursday. Um, no activity buses. And again, please register through the Edulog app. Um, information has been sent out. It is also on the website and I will show you where to go on the next slide here. So as you can see on the main website, on the district website and the school website, at the top there is a list of tabs and under the parent and student resources, when you go down to the E's, you will see the Edulog parent portal. There's a video, there's instructions. All you will need is your student's five digit ID number. Please um, look for that in the packet you receive and you can get that information. Here are some reasons why you might want to use Edulog's parent portal. It can um, tell you via push notification when your child's bus is within a certain distance from their stop. It will show you where the bus is en route, and it will give you current pickup and drop off times and locations for your child's stop. It cannot tell you if your child made it to the bus and it cannot tell you where your child got off the bus. So if they're supposed to get off the bus at the corner of the street where you live, they don't get off there. We don't have a way to tell you that they got off three stops before, but it does give you some notifications as far as where the bus is and the drop off and pick up times and locations. Um, as far as those that will be taking their children to school, we have drop off and pick up areas. The front entrance gate for the school is the student pick up and drop off. In your informational packet that was mailed out and emailed to you, there was a map that has this information, but I just wanna share it with you once again. Um, parents may not enter the student parking lot to the west campus off of Yuma. The auditorium loop is open in the morning for student drop off, but is not available for after school pickup. And parents must enter the East parking lot from Goodyear Boulevard or Sherman Street in the front to drop off and pick up students. And for those of you new to the school, we just wanna share with you a couple of things about drop off and pick up of students. One, we are so excited for the new Goodyear Recreational Center and Park that is right um, beside us here. We think it's going to be a great addition to our community, but also that area does share space with BASIS, which is another school and our area for drop off and pick up. So it can get very, very, very congested. So please plan accordingly. Please plan your route. Offer a little extra time built into your schedule for the first couple of days of school until you can come up with a routine of where you're going to go. Maybe you'll drop your student off at an alternate location close for them to walk. Come up with a plan ahead of time and just pack your patience those first couple of days but because between the recreational center basis and our campus, it can get a little bogged down and cause a little bit of frustration. And we know what that's like with the first couple of days of school. And if you're dropping off your child prior to going to work yourself, we don't want you to be late. So just please make sure to take that into consideration Goodyear PD is aware of it. They do send out officers when need be. We have our SRO on campus as well, but please just remember that those areas do get a little congested. It does start to get better, but the beginning of the year is always a little crazy. Um, visitors during school hours. So if you have to come on campus for any reason during the school day, parents and visitors will use the North Gate off of Sherman Street during school hours of 8.15 to 2.50. There will be a security guard to sign visitors in, direct them to designated visitors parking spots and notify the office. Please make sure that you have some sort of identification on you. Sometimes they might ask for identification. Um, and just also a note here that students cannot be signed out after 2.50. The school day ends shortly after three, and we ask that no students are signed are signed out after 2.50 p.m. Also, we have an amazing bookstore. Not only do they have books, but they have great merchandise for our school, um, great swag gear, new backpacks this year. We have t-shirts, everything you can think of. They also handle all the student accounts. Um, if you need to pay for an athletic fee or pay for your parking pass, they're the place to go. Our ladies are great. Um, students may not purchase activity or event tickets if there is an outstanding debt on their account, and seniors may not walk in graduation if there is an outstanding debt on their account. So please, please, please make sure that you check your fees, check your accounts. There is a parent portal, and I will be sure to provide you with more information on that for those of you that are new, but we use TouchBase, so you can always check your student account online, but make sure that there is no outstanding fees, and those fees, again, do get paid in the bookstore. 
Uh, cafeteria payment options. So as I stated earlier, all students will receive free breakfast and lunch for the 2021-2022 school year. Students will utilize their ID number to purchase a la carte items such as bottled water, chips, and snacks. Um, parents can add money to their students' accounts in three ways. They can bring cash, and students will bring that cash to the um, cafeteria line to pay for their items. They can bring in a check. You can also put money on the account with cash or check, or you can go online, and you can add money onto the online system, which is Titan. Um, so you would go to family.titank12.com, and you would use a credit or debit card. And there might be a transaction fee, but that's where you can go to add funds to your children's account if need be. Also, free and reduced lunches. As I stated before, all students will receive free and reduced um, or excuse me, all students will receive free breakfast and lunch this year, but we also have our free and reduced price meal household applications. So free and reduced price meal benefit applications are available in the Student Support Center and can also be found online on our website or on the family.titank12 website. Students who have participated in meal assistance programs last year within the district are eligible for the same benefits for the first 30 days of the school year only. And then all applications for this year must be submitted by September 11th if they're still eligible. I do want to say that free and reduced meal, meal applications do more than just provide you with free breakfast and lunches. There are so many alternate opportunities that we can utilize those for our students, including athletic participation fee waivers, AP test waivers, free or low cost internet services, reduced and waived fees for phone carriers. There's an ACT waiver. There's community college grants to take community college courses concurrently at little to no cost. College application fees are waived or reduced. We also have additional scholarship opportunities for secondary education with those um, benefits. And then something new with the pandemic, there are um, the EBT cards that are given out and we have PEBT benefits, so P standing for pandemic, and that provides your family a little bit of extra assistance and support to provide nutritious items and meals for your children at home. So there are so many more benefits, like I said, being a Title I school is not something that's looked upon as a negative thing. We we are proud to be who we are and we are proud to hold that because it allows us to do so much more for our students and our school and our community and provide so many unique, amazing opportunities for the students that really do help the students at the end of the day. If you have questions about your application or anything with the cafeteria, these are the two ladies that we suggest that you reach out to. They are both located at the district office. I have provided their phone numbers and email addresses for you, and you can reach out to them should you have any questions. You can also reach out to me. If I can't answer the question, I will definitely forward the information to them, but just know that they are wonderful assets to help you along the way. Our athletic department. So if your student is going to play a sport, there is a clearance packet, a physical code of conduct, um, register my athlete information that must be filled out in order to participate. We have participation fees per sport. Um, the full price is $100 with the free and reduced price being $50. The athlete maximum is $200 per year and the family maximum is $400 per year. And also participation fees are paid in the bookstore and tax credits are recommended. So if you have the opportunity to provide a tax credit to pay for those, it is strongly encouraged and we are happy to help you get that information. And if you attend any sports, and we can't wait to see you all attending all of our fun and exciting sports on campus this year, um, fall and winter seasons, the adults are $6, students are $4, spring season, adults are $3, students are $2, seniors over the age of 65, and children five and under are free. Um, we also have a student activity pass for $25, which allows your student and your student only to attend all home events um, for free, or excuse me, for $25 fee that you pay at the beginning, but then they don't pay any gate fees throughout the year. And we also have family passes for four members, five members, and six members of $100, $125, and $150 respectively. And students may not use family passes without parents present. We ran into a problem in the past where a family pass would be purchased. I would go and give it to my child and they would take three friends with them into an event. Unfortunately, it has to be a family and it has to be a parent or guardian present to be used. Also, as I've mentioned before, Parent View is a great tool to have in your toolbox, especially as a parent of a high school student. 
Um, Parent View allows you to check grades, attendance, discipline, schedules, provide teachers with email contact. Um, it's a great source to have. We highly encourage every parent to use Parent View, and we encourage parents to not share that information in your login with students. A lot of students were using their Parent View logins and um, not sharing all the information as they should be with the parents. So please make sure that you have your login. Students have their own through Student View. So we encourage you to use your own login for your own reference. And if you have any problems or you need anything reset, you can't get into your account, please contact me. My email is here at the bottom again, and I can get you set up or set back up if you were locked out. Um, grade reporting. So we do midterm, mid-quarter grades, and end of quarter grades, and semester grades. All grade reports at any time can be viewed online. Um, we used to do reports where they would be mailed out or sent home, but we have moved away from that, and now you can use Parent View to get into your account to view your children's progress reports and grade reports at any time. Attendance policy. So students are allowed nine absences per semester, verified or unverified. On the 10th absence from school, and that could be for a class, one class, two class, all six classes, students will be denied credit for those classes. Attendance appeal hearings will be scheduled for students to possibly recover credit. It's not always a guarantee. They go to a hearing, they have to appeal, provide any information or supplementary paperwork to support why they miss school. And a medical note is the only documentation that excuses an absence. Um, we also allow five excused tardies per semester. Um, excused tardies equal a sweep, and to excuse an absence, you need to call the attendance office and the number is provided. Please make sure too that your calls have to be made to the school within 24 hours of the absence. You can't have your child miss a day in the first week of school and then call in December to verify that absence. The only absences at that point that will be allowed to be changed are those that you provide a medical note. So maybe your child was late to school or missed a day because they had an appointment, you forgot to get a note, you forgot to get the note again, have it sent over email over fax over, you finally make that call, that's okay, but please make sure that all absences and tardies are reported within 24 hours. We do have a tardy, also known as sweep policy. Our first, second, and third offenses are logged into the system. You are notified by the school of those sweeps. Fourth, fifth, and sixth offenses are logged in the system and school students are assigned after school detention. The seventh and eighth offenses are logged. The parents are called and students are assigned one day of SIP, which is our student improvement program. On the ninth offense, classes are closed pending a parent conference and a signed contract for attendance. And on the 10th or more offense, it is logged, parents are called, and you are assigned Saturday school. And please note, the handbook will not reflect these changes. That's why we're going over in this presentation. If you have any questions, you can contact myself and I'd be happy to assist. We also have chronic illness packets. We know that, especially during the time of the pandemic, um, just a lot has changed. If your child has a chronic medical condition, you need to contact our school nurse and the school counselor. A chronic, chronic illness status may exempt students from the attendance policy and avoid a loss of credit. I provided here the email address, phone number with extension of our nurse. If you have any questions, you can reach out to her, but please make sure to communicate this with both the counselor and the nurse to make sure everyone that needs to be in the loop is informed. Security. We do have security here on campus here at Desert Edge. We have five campus monitors. We have a school resource officer, which is Officer Roberts. We do bi-monthly lockdown drills, bi-monthly fire drills. We do a bus evacuation drill each semester. We have security cameras throughout the campus. We have a student advisory lessons and school safety lessons that are um, handled with our students to teach them all these things. And we do have a staff crisis management team. So we are very aware of safety and security, and we do everything we can to ensure that your student is safe here at Desert Edge. Also, I know I've mentioned SIP and our Student Discipline Program and Student Improvement Program. So our Student Improvement Program, also known as SIP, is designed to prevent students from missing instructional time, provide students with redirection for poor decisions and choices through reflection and refinement, and motivate students to make good choices and good decisions. And just as a little side note here, Desert Edge does not administer in school suspension as a disciplinary contact or consequence, excuse me. 
Our SIP program is held on Wednesdays after school from 1.30 until 3.10 p.m. Transportation is not provided. Students are allowed to work on schoolwork upon completion of program requirements, and out-of-school suspensions are administered for disciplinary infractions as needed. We also have Saturday School. So this is in partnership with the Maricopa County Juvenile Probation Courts and DE. Saturday School is a restorative opportunity for students. The class provides students with the opportunity to restore their wrongdoings and to gain educational exposure to such subjects as vaping, bullying, cyberbullying, relationships, anger management, and the laws that guide each subject. And a component of this course is community service. Another thing we want to talk about today is dress code. Students may not expose their bellies, bottoms, or chests. Students may not wear obscene, vulgar, gang, or drug or alcohol related apparel. Students may not wear strapless tops or dresses. No blankets allowed. Um, please no bandanas except for black or orange on approved spirit days. No lounge pants, pajama pants, or slippers. Um, and you can check out the student handbook for the entire dress code listed in there. But these are the things that we see most often with our school and our students. Uh, another big thing here on the campus of DE is electronic devices. So DE does not allow electronic devices to be used in the classroom unless it is for instructional purposes. No cell phones, no iPads, no iPods, etc. We also have an earbud headphone policy, which states that no earbuds, AirPods, or portable speakers are allowed on campus. If they are seen or heard, consequences will be given, and we are not responsible for lost or stolen electronic devices. So if a student does bring AirPods and something happens where the case someday goes missing or or you, your student leaves it somewhere and then they come back and then all of a sudden the AirPods are missing, we can't do anything about that. Um, they're not allowed here, so we ask you just to leave them at home. DE is a one-to-one -one technology school. Every student will be assigned a district-owned Chromebook that will be used only by your student. The district will retain full ownership of Chromebooks, equipment, and software. Chromebooks will be checked in Checked out in August and this year collected in May. Parents may choose the district's optional device protection plan. Protection plans must be purchased by Friday, September 10th. This is really important because we'll get so many calls mid-September that parents weren't aware. They did not know that this was a possibility. The student loses the charger. The Chromebook stops working. The $30 investment will cut down your costs if there is an issue. You can go on the website and it will provide you the breakdown of what the cost will be with and without the protection plan. And it's truly worth the $30 investment to ensure that that device is in working order all year. And students are required to have the district provided device. They cannot bring their own laptops or tablets. In the past, students would bring in their own computer. They felt more comfortable using a Mac or a MacBook, or they have something that is better for them, or they just feel more comfortable with. We ask you to leave those at home, do your homework on those if you'd like, but while you're at school, please use the school device. We also offer many options and ways for communication. Um, I'm very big on communication. You will hear a lot from me. You will see newsletters from me, social media posts, remind messages. Um, quite honestly, you might get a little sick of communication from me, but I'd rather keep you in the loop than have you wondering about things. And again, if I'm not communicating something clearly, please let me know. We have a student handbook, an email dialer, our website. We do weekly reminders and updates. There's a quarterly newsletter. Um, there is Remind, which is another avenue to receive messages. Um, we have our social media. Mrs. Jones has one as well. We also have Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. There is a YouTube channel. We have Parent View. We have a Principal Student Advisory Council, Site Council meetings, booster clubs, weekly newsletters, you name it. There's always a way to be informed. And we just ask that you please let us know if you're not receiving those communications so that we can get you set up so that you can stay in the loop. Again, parent communication. If along the way you have a concern with academic, athletic, extracurricular, or teacher concerns, we do ask that you follow the chain of command. And the first thing is to contact the teacher, counselor, or coach. I would say at this step, if you're reaching out to them and you're having trouble, please let me know and I will facilitate to help you out. But the first line of communication should be with the teacher, coach, or counselor. Second, if you um, at that point have no resolve or something cannot be resolved at that point, please contact the assistant principal. The second slide provided their names and their letter breakdowns of the alphabet and who to contact. And at that point, if it can still not be resolved, then please contact the principal. The expectation is that all calls or emails will be returned within 24 hours. And for a concern involving your child 
child immediately safely, please call the school directly um, and let us know. But please, if you could follow the chain of command, it makes things a lot easier. And sometimes things can just be handled between you and the teacher. And it's just that simple. And we hope that we don't have these issues. But if so, this is our recommended step-by-step um, -step breakdown. And then here we just have a couple tips on how to help us help your student to be successful. One is to be involved in your teenager's life. We all know that teenagers can be a little bit more independent, but we want to still be there to guide them and be involved. If they're in a club, sport activity, be involved, be there. Ask them how their day is going. Please do not believe everything you hear. Ask questions. So many things get changed through the rumor mill or something might be posted on Snapchat. That's really not the truth. So please make sure that you ask questions. Also, check your parent view regularly and communicate with the teachers. We want to hear from you if you have a question. That's what we're here for. Also, check your student's social media accounts. They also have separate accounts that maybe they're hiding for you. I've heard that at one point, the big thing was having a Finsta, which was a secondary um, Facebook or Instagram account, which students would then post a lot of the pictures that they didn't want you to see. And then they had the clean one that mom and dad could see and be involved in. Also help develop your child's coping skills and hold your student accountable. All of these steps here are great steps and help ways to help us help you to have your student be successful. Throughout the year, you will see information from me with videos like this where it's a little bit more condensed, providing information of things you can do. We will offer some in-school workshops as well um, as the school year progresses, but please just do what you can to help us. We're here to help you be successful as parents and we wanna do what we can to be a part of that team. So with that being said, I would like to thank everyone for coming out today and listening to this presentation. I know it was very lengthy, but hopefully you got to enjoy this from the comfort of your home. And again, if you ever have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. I'm here to assist you. You have a great team of staff members, students, community. We're all here to do the same thing, and that's to help your child be successful. And with that, I hope you have a wonderful evening. We can't wait to see your students back next week on Monday, August 2nd or Tuesday, August 3rd, depending on their grade level. And as always, if you need anything, let us know. Have a great evening. We are DE.